passions and pastimes and I'm here with another Makers Monday. I've been uh, very busy with looking after grandchildren and vacation and gardening and um, all those kinds of wonderful things that come up in June and July and August. Um, so I finally found some time to actually make a video. It's not like I haven't been making things. Mostly I've been making things with uh, my granddaughter or uh, with other young people. Um, so I thought today I'd show you um, why I'm disassembling these necklaces to save the chains, to salvage the chains. So we've started doing um, work with UV resin, which is resin that, uh, a clear resin which you can color um, or embed things in and you can um, you know, just some examples. Uh, you can put into molds and then you can make jewelry from them. And often, you know, you use a, um, a background like these or these. And the challenge becomes when you're working with lots of kids, coming up with enough chains or necklaces to actually hang these things on. So um, I've decided to take these two necklaces, one which is broken and one which has just got lots of chains and which tangles very easily, and uh, take them apart to uh, save the chain so that I can add um, a clasp or clasps and, uh, and use them with the kids. Um, I was really disappointed with a necklace chain that was already assembled that I purchased from uh, Michael's. It was gold tone and had turned to copper after one day of wear, which is not usually what happens with my granddaughter, but was very disappointing. Of course, she's the first one to quickly say, this chain's not the color it used to be. Um, so I'm going to take these large rings off because they're very useful to keep. I just like to put them sort of back um, in shape. So that the weak point on this was where the, the chains connected to these pieces and these pieces will be great to repurpose. And there were four sets of, or four groups of chain and they're not cut, they're nice and long. So there, we'll take off that side. And this side's attached to the clasp, so we'll find the there there's the join so there's a couple of ways to open jump rings if you're really unsure it's nice if you have a uh, have a, a large jump ring that you take one set of pliers and you hold it the the ring vertically and the other set of pliers sort of vertically it's harder to do this when you're looking at the camera and then you with your dominant hand, twist. Whoops, I don't guess I didn't get it at the right spot, but it worked. Twist as if you were opening a door. So that, that you know, how you twist the door handle to open the door. And that little twist is enough to open up the ring, and then you can take it off or not. So now let's try it on this other one here. Sometimes it's hard to see where the join is. There it is. Okay, so we'll do that again. And I, when I was having troubles in the early days, I saw this tip about holding them somewhat vertically, which is probably harder to do, but it gives you a better sense of how things turn. And then I've turned my dominant hand. It opens. Everything comes off. And then, sorry, it keeps going out of focus in the uh, camera. Then once you're more comfortable with that movement, yeah, then you can just hold your, your pliers like this, left and right. And then you just keep twisting back and forth till the ends click together. That one's not quite right, but it's close enough. So... Here are my chains, 
and I just have to find the clasp remove the clasp so there's one piece of chain plenty long enough for one girl necklace and I don't think it would be a problem if we hung silver from that or put a dark you know put a dark ring on the pink or it might be even better for this dark one so we have just two more rings to open I'm gonna leave the clasp together Okay, so there's one side, the other side, let's focus, yes, focus, 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 twist, there you see it's open, so I'm just going to, I'm going to leave the, or I'll try to leave the lobster claw on there but didn't work but I will close the ring and put it back on the lobster claw clasp and one more I can't get it to focus there oh it's focused down there a little bit but again left side the right side twist slide off the uh, chains so here are all the chains I've left with one clasp but that's okay one two three four and then one two uh, and then two that are a little more than double so that's lots and lots of chain for making necklaces when I'm working with kids I'm just going to put them in there put all the bits and pieces and these are great pieces then to be repurposed because these are glass and nice rings and great shape now this one's um, really interesting construction, but really ta easily tangled. So I think for this one, let's see. I'm gonna try to change my settings on my camera so it'll focus better, so just a second. Okay, so I've changed the focus settings, so maybe this will help. So we can, we have, I can get them untangled here. So we have four ball chains, they're, uh, they're they look short, but actually you see that they are folded in this ring. Now, I'm not sure if this ring is solid. Let's just look at it. No, it's not. So one way I could take this apart would be to open the ring, but it's got some texture on it, and its I think it would be just easier to detach the chains by opening this ring. So let's find out where this ring has a, its little split. Hmm, might be right there where that was stuck. Yep. So there's the split. One side. The other side to focus good so I've got the class the uh, return oh this one's stuff okay this one's nice and stiff so this is where that other form of holding comes in handy where you fold sort of like uh, sideways and I'm also gonna switch if I had two of these I'm gonna switch pliers these are stronger pliers there so and they have a flat edge rather than a round edge so if I had two pairs of those there we go that opens no problem off comes the clasp off comes 
E four. I'm going to leave the ring on one chain because then it can be used with a, a gold tone clasp. Focus. There we go. I will to wiggle it back and forth and back. Alrighty. Back and forth. Okay, that's gonna have to do. Sorry for the the mix up. So there they come right out. There's one again. Perfect length for a kid's necklace. And they just slide right out of these rings to where did the other two go? Oh no, there's only two because they're they were folded in half. And you also see that the chain is flexible that goes through these tubes. I'm not sure about on both sides. This doesn't feel very flexible. But there may be a little bit of chain that can be rescued in here. So on the other side of the necklace, we'll just open up this ring on the other side once we find the gap. So are again twist there we go twist and take everything off and I'm gonna leave this ring on the lobster claw so we just reverse the steps Bring the clasp the back together. And you heard it click there as the ends joined. So that's perfect. So now if we pull these out, one, two. So there's four nice chains for to go with uh, these kind of lockets or, or resin work. This uh, or, you know, or these. Um, now... Oh, I gotta make sure that I don't lose the extender. Okay, so there's one, so four chains. And now this is nice uh, twisted chain. And all I have to do to release it that I think, let's see how it's, is release it from the ring on each side. So that'll be four more rings to take apart. Find the break. Now, if you're trying to do this with a necklace where the links have been soldered together, or if you're for some reason in such a hurry that you can't get your plier, so there's where the ring, you can always take a pair of strong wire cutters suitable for the weight of the ring and just snip it in half. Now that just if it's if it's a soldered ring that you could try snipping it where it's been soldered so that you uh, can reuse the ring but if you're in that much of a hurry you may not care and you could just snip it in so that drops. Yeah, so if you, if again, I have um, a really nice set of clippers with a blue handle. This is not them, but this is the kind of clippers that you would use. I have a stronger pair. That's, that pair is getting a little worn out from years of use. I could probably sharpen them. So once more, I find, focus, there we go, twist, off come the rings. So now I have this piece with its rings on the end. That would make a nice pendant. You could hang things from here. Um, you could uh, reintroduce it, you know, sideways in another necklace by taking off these rings or maybe moving one to the top 
So they, they just sort of hangs from left and right. So lots of things that can be done with this piece. And we're almost to where we have a whole bunch of chain. Nice chain that won't tarnish quite as fast, I think, as that uh, little hobby chain that I purchased. And okay, focus, twist. Off those come. I think we'll take the ring off as well. One more side. <clears throat> Gonna find the the join. If uh, if you don't have great eyesight, putting it in a camera like this actually, and putting up close expands the picture, makes it harder for me. Um, to see things actually, but it might make it easier for you to at least find the break. Sometimes the rings are so small. I guess that's not the best. That's I'm just gonna go around this way, so you can actually one more time see that ring twist in motion. Where's the break? There. Okay, so it's on this side. <clears throat> there we go twist toward me. Sorry, I dropped it. And I didn't get it open enough. I got it open a little bit. Now, my hands are pretty strong, so watch this. There we go. I can just, if, if you're stressing with pliers or don't have enough pliers, or actually I know that some people use their crimping pliers as well um, because they have a nice flat edge. Um, you just want to make sure you use them as pliers and not to try to crimp the stuff involved. There we go. Okay, so I've got some rings. I've got some embellishments. Now let's look at these chains. There's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there is a birthday party's worth of chains. If you wanted to do jewelry with kids and make pendants, you just have to, uh, well, you could teach them how to add the clasps. But there are enough very nice little chains for, you know, um, you know, for a piece from a jewelry jar. So with the number of pieces in the jewelry jar, <clears throat> um, pro less than a dollar a piece, you know, uh, it's for, the, for the whole necklace, probably less than 50 cents for the necklace. And now you've made 10 chains at five cents each or two, you know, 10, two more plus four more. So 14 chains. Uh, at you know, so you're at pennies a piece, and you have things for repurposing, for birthday parties, uh, if you you know for people who are able to wear non gold and silver, so non precious metal jewelry, um, you've got uh, a huge bounty of reusable chain. Uh, I'll come back with another Makers Monday when we show you how to make these resin pendants and some interesting ideas that we've come up with, my granddaughter and I, on, on making pendants when you don't have a little frame like this. This is um, an experiment using a repurposed scrapbooking frame and uh, some dried flowers and there's some... Uh, we need to do some or improve some of our techniques so we don't get these rough edges, but that turned out pretty well for a first try. And we'll show you, you know, how we uh, how we actually use the molds, the, the resin molds, to create these different kinds of UV 
resin pendants. I like working with the UV, um, with kids anyway, simply because it hardens under UV light. So you, if, on a sunny day, you can take it outside and have it harden in um, one to three minutes. Um, and you don't have to use actual UV lights that where you wear special glasses and, and so on to protect your eyes. You could also use um, the two-part resins that harden overnight, but then that's not good for things like a birthday party or a craft that you want somebody to take home the same day. Thanks very much for joining me. I'm glad to be back, and I hope that, I know that there will be more Makers Mondays in my future um, as time permits. Take care, and I hope you've inspired, uh, are inspired to do some things with jewelry that you have around the house or in jewelry jars so that you can save and repurpose, um, or maybe, you know, do some jewelry stuff with kids in your life. Thanks. Bye. Bye.